For generations the New York Times was regarded as the gold standard of journalism, a trusted source that shaped public opinion across a broad spectrum of issues. It stood as a beacon of integrity and reliability, setting the pace for how news was reported worldwide. From political developments to scientific discoveries, from cultural trends to matters of social justice, the New York Times was where millions turned to understand the world. Its reputation as a paper of record meant that when the New York Times said something, you could believe it. However, in the past few decades, the media landscape has undergone a seismic shift. The rise of digital technology, 24-hour news cycles, and the race for online clicks have redefined the priorities of news organizations. The once slow, methodical pace of investigative journalism has been replaced by the need to break news quickly, regardless of whether it's fully vetted or contextually accurate. The era of social media has brought both democratization and sensationalism to the forefront of how people consume information. Even a stalwart institution like the New York Times has not been immune to these pressures. In this fast-paced digital world, where clicks, likes and shares drive revenue, the lines between objective reporting, editorial commentary, and outright advocacy have blurred. In such an environment, it's easy to lose sight of nuanced, fact-based journalism in favor of catchy headlines and compelling narratives that provoke emotional responses. This is especially problematic when reporting on health and nutrition, where complex scientific studies are often distilled into simplified and sometimes misleading conclusions. This brings us to a recent New York Times article that claimed consuming red meat is linked to an increased risk of type 2 diabetes. But before accepting this at face value, we need to take a closer look at both the research behind this claim and the broader context of how information about health and diet is presented to the public. The New York Times article in question references a study published in Nature Metabolism, which suggests that higher consumption of red meat is associated with a slightly increased risk of type 2 diabetes. According to the study's findings, people who consumed more red meat had a marginally higher chance of developing diabetes compared to those who ate less. However, the language used in the article, phrases like linked and suggests, is critical to understanding the limitations of the study. These words are markers of uncertainty, indicating that the study does not definitively prove a cause and effect relationship. In fact, the study relies on observational data, a type of research that is inherently limited because it can only show correlation, not causation. Let's clarify what this means. Observational studies involve watching groups of people over time to see if certain behaviors like eating red meat are associated with specific outcomes like developing diabetes. While these studies are useful for identifying patterns and hypotheses, they cannot determine that one thing directly causes the other. Just because two things happen together doesn't mean one causes the other. For instance, it's possible that people who eat more red meat also engage in other behaviors, such as consuming more processed foods or leading more sedentary lifestyles, that increase their risk of diabetes. Without controlling for these and other factors, it's impossible to say with certainty that red meat itself is the culprit. Lost in the discussion about the potential risks of red meat is its substantial nutritional value. Red meat is a powerhouse of essential nutrients that are difficult to match in similar quantities from plant-based sources. It is rich in high-quality protein which contains all the essential amino acids our bodies need to repair tissues, build muscle, and perform countless biological functions. In addition to protein, red meat is packed with heme iron, which is the form of iron most readily absorbed by the human body. This is a crucial point because many plant-based foods contain non-heme iron, which is harder for the body to use. Iron is essential for carrying oxygen throughout the bloodstream and supporting cognitive function and overall energy levels. The importance of vitamin B12 in red meat also cannot be overstated. It's critical for maintaining healthy nerve cells and aiding in DNA synthesis. Red meat also contains zinc, which supports the immune system, and creatine a compound that helps produce energy during high-intensity exercise. When you consider the benefits, it's clear that red meat offers a comprehensive array of nutrients that play an essential role in human health. For those following specific dietary patterns like low-carbohydrate or carnivore diet, red meat is an indispensable food because it provides essential nutrients while helping to manage carbohydrate intake. Now let's delve into the specifics of the study that the New York Times article is based on. 
The researchers reported a hazard ratio of 1.26, indicating that the risk of developing type 2 diabetes was slightly elevated for those who consumed more red meat. But let's put this number into perspective. A hazard ratio of 1.0 indicates no effect while a ratio of 1.26 represents a relatively small increase in risk. For comparison, studies linking smoking to lung cancer report hazard ratios as high as 30, meaning that smokers have a 30-fold increased risk of developing lung cancer compared to non-smokers. A hazard ratio of 1.26 is minuscule by comparison and might not even be statistically significant in the grand scheme of public health. Many experts agree that hazard ratios below 2.0 are often considered noise in the data, especially when dealing with complex multifactorial conditions like type 2 diabetes. Additionally, the study does not account for the many confounding variables that might influence the results. For instance, people who eat more red meat may also lead lifestyles that increase their diabetes risk in other ways, such as eating more processed foods or engaging in less physical activity. Without properly controlling for these factors, it's impossible to isolate red meat as the sole contributor to the increased risk. Humans have been consuming red meat for millions of years, and it has played a vital role in our survival and evolution. Societies that relied heavily on red meat, such as the Inuit or Maasai, thrived for generations without widespread cases of diabetes. It's worth asking, if red meat is so harmful, how did these populations manage to survive, let alone thrive? Moreover, when we look at the broader trends in diet and health over the past century, the connection between red meat and diabetes becomes even more dubious. In the early 20th century, people ate far more red meat than they do today. Steaks, organ meats, and bone marrow were common staples in both restaurants and home kitchens. Yet, the incidence of type 2 diabetes was relatively low. It was only with the rise of processed foods, sugary beverages, and high-carbohydrate diets in the latter half of the century that we began to see an explosion in type 2 diabetes. Today, we eat far less red meat than our ancestors did, yet diabetes rates have skyrocketed. This begs the question, is red meat really to blame, or are other dietary and lifestyle factors more likely culprits? It's important to understand that the narrative around red meat and its supposed dangers may be driven by more than just science. There are significant financial interests at play. The plant-based food industry and pharmaceutical companies stand to benefit enormously from promoting the idea that red meat is unhealthy. Plant-based foods are highly profitable, especially as more consumers turn to them in the belief that they are healthier alternatives to animal products. Meanwhile, pharmaceutical companies benefit when people rely on medications to manage chronic conditions like type 2 diabetes, rather than addressing the root causes of these conditions through diet and lifestyle changes. A low-carbohydrate, meat-heavy diet has been shown to help many people reduce or eliminate their need for medications, which directly threatens the profit margins of the pharmaceutical industry. As we've discussed, the study cited by the New York Times is observational meaning it can only show that two things are correlated. It cannot prove that one causes the other. This is a crucial distinction that is often glossed over in media coverage. Just because two things happen together doesn't mean one caused the other. For instance, a study might find that people who drink more coffee have lower rates of depression. But does this mean coffee prevents depression? Not necessarily. There could be other factors involved, such as lifestyle or social interactions, that contribute to the lower rates of depression among coffee drinkers. This principle applies to the red meat and diabetes debate as well. While the study found a correlation between higher red meat intake and an increased risk of type 2 diabetes, this doesn't mean that red meat causes diabetes. Confounding variables, such as overall diet quality, physical activity levels or genetic predispositions, could be influencing the results. In a world where information is abundant but wisdom is scarce, it's more important than ever to approach sensational health headlines with a critical mind. The New York Times article, while informative, presents only part of the story. The study it cites is observational, meaning it cannot establish a direct cause and effect relationship between red meat consumption and type 2 diabetes. Moreover, red meat is a nutrient-dense food that has played a critical role in human survival and evolution. While no food is without its risks, the evidence linking red meat to diabetes remains weak and the benefits of consuming it in moderation are well documented. As always, the key is to stay informed, think critically and look beyond the headlines before making decisions about your health.
If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content that dives deeper into the science behind today's headlines. Hit the notification bell so you never miss an update, and be sure to share this video with anyone who might benefit from a more balanced perspective on nutrition and health. What do you think? Should we be more cautious about red meat, or is the fear around it overblown? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay curious, stay critical, and see you in the next video.